anti-Afro Spengalis, I'm sure we all have heard or seen the saying, talk is cheap. How often do we hear or do we see the second part of the saying, but actions are priceless? I think the reason why there is less emphasis on actions are priceless is because you have these subjects are just all too keen to run their mouths for a specific purpose, mainly to curry favor and to either enter in or maintain a position in a social group. The actions are irrelevant. All you need, by and large, the talk. Let me let you hear this clip and I'm gonna come back and tell you what's going on. You know, and again, this internet shit is the wild, wild west. So at the end of the day, like whatever I would say legal means are available to you, hey, um, ex exhaust your resources and exercise your rights to the fullest extent of the law as you see fit. Civil litigation is like, it, it's, it's a money thing. Now you heard Tiff P who ran a live stream November 10th, 2023. This is when it first became known that Mona had gone into the social security data system and stole information. Passing around to these co-conspirators in the Umar Johnson sector, who then went on to either post the information, blurt out the information, or retransmit the information, all of it in violation of the 1974 Federal Privacy Rights Act. And this list is not complete, by the way. So this whole thing is playing out. We have the entire live stream. Mona was laughing, denying she did it until she had the hammer dropped on her about, I have your email. She started sounding nervous. But here's what I want to point back to. Tip P's comment. Sounds good. Sounds reasonable. It sounds very much appropriate based on one who has experienced someone breaching their data. Although I'll make sure I say your name so I, so people know who I'm talking about. Sexy Toy Lady is one who loves to sit around and be an apologist for amoral subjects just like her. And had the nerve to sit up here and say that Tiff P has never given any type of legal advice, which is a damn lie. You just heard one example. She's been giving legal advice since 2000 and when she came here, 2020. So that is a lie. In addition to all the other claims that you made about Tiff P, the denials you made on her behalf, I can go through every single one of them. I won't do it on this video, but you're a liar just like she is. You're doing nothing but re-emphasizing her motivation to lie. So she says all this about the social security crimes, but we don't get anything else from Tiff P. As time rolls by and more information is revealed because subjects on that live stream we're wanting to know about the emails. Are you going to put those emails out? All of that. This is before the emails came out. It was before I showed the few emails that I did show. There are others about Mona making it clear she was going to be doing what she did. And I told her not to do it. Yes, the word is told you not to do it. You don't have to listen to a damn thing I say. But I bet you wish you had. You can run around here and try to act like, what? You don't have anything because I never told you anything I would give a shit about getting out. She only has one thing she can say. Let's make it clear. Comparing public access to stealing information in a federally protected data system isn't even on the same hemisphere. One is a crime and one is not. But as far as Tiff P, she's gone silent on the social security crimes. If you hear what she just said, 
Where's the follow-up, Tiff P? You're a lawyer. You've heard. Don't tell me you haven't heard legendary grown mold admit to his crimes. Don't tell me you didn't hear all those other subjects. Here they are right here, perpetrating their crimes in these YouTube streets. You have been in their chats, just like you've been in the chats right from the beginning, the base, the original attack panels that went after children, that went after spouses, that spread all these sexually degrading lies or slander, I'll say, about others, threats of violence. You have been in these chats the entire time as an attorney, like you have authority over others, but you have gone silent with respect to the social security crimes. Legendary grown mold has made these statements. Even Mona has gone into chats and blurted out social security information. But where are you, Tiff P? Going back to talk is cheap, actions are priceless. You are so irresponsible in the manner in which you have talked about this situation. However, Tiff P takes it upon herself to label the victims of this crime as dangerous, as willing to call CPS at the drop of the hat, as psychopaths. This is what Tip P is doing. Binary and Carrie Ann came up in here trying to raise the panic quotient. As far as AFW straight up lied and went off and told these other sectors what we were going to do. What did Tip P do? Nothing. She sat there. Didn't say a word. Has seen and heard all this going. And she says she's in all the chats. But she's saying nothing about legendary grown mold and all these other social security co-conspirator criminals. Incredibly unethical about the whole situation. She uses the law license as a weapon and expects to have no consequences. Look at the situation here. This woman, unfortunately, was de-existed by a security guard. Here we go, rogue public servant. What does this lawyer have to do with it? This is a prosecutor. He was running around making these derogatory comments about Orlando, downtown Orlando. You know, there was a shooting back in 2016. Before this shooting, this young woman lost her life at the hands of this security guard. The defendant had not yet been brought to trial, but the prosecutor here was making all these statements about downtown Orlando and the people and the people that drink. And unfortunately, this young woman was highly inebriated and wasn't even able to find her apartment door when she got back into the complex and he's offering to help her ends up taking her life. So he's making all these comments about Orlando and what should happen to it. Her family writes a letter to the state's attorney's office and saying, we don't want this prosecutor on our case as far as prosecuting the man that killed our daughter. We don't want him prosecuted. Listen to the crap that he says. This is a public servant. Those comments were so offensive. I placed an article and I placed the disciplinary decision that removed him from office, but that's not all people. He had made other egregious race attacking, vile comments about black folks in 2014 and was allowed to stay on the job, he was given a stern warning. You see, it doesn't always result in you getting fired. It probably should. The statements he was making about crack hoes and stuff. Then when he was removed, he had a heart attack. The free speech is gone. We're not allowed to say what we want to say. What people like Tiff P don't get, those that have professional titles, licenses, certificates, credentials, they confuse those privileges with rights. While you may have the right to say something, you don't have the privilege 
of impunity that doesn't exist. You can be held responsible for your words and your actions. So when Tiff P comes up here as an attorney and categorizes victims as dangerous, that's problematic. That flies in the face of what the law represents. Just the same, lawyers are not supposed to be ridiculing people with criminal backgrounds. But it's odd that Tiff P sits up here and totally forgets, or excuse me, specifically chooses to forget the crimes that legendary grown mold confessed to after he said he didn't say it. And she uses her position to advance the abusive and criminal agenda of the perpetrators. You don't ridicule the accused or those with a criminal background, which you shouldn't be doing, but she sure is ridiculing those who have been victimized. And that's unethical, out of the ballpark unethical. And she really thinks that she's slick when she does it. So I already told Tip P once, I already gave her one warning. I haven't tried to locate Tip P, but that's on my agenda now. Because what you're not going to do, Tip P, is to continue to come up here behind these verified perpetrators of crime. They actually posted the information online, blurted it out online, and you are attacking the victims. More evidence of Tiff P's deliberate malicious disposition is knowing good and damn well the court ruled in favor of us, but she continues to push the agenda that we're dangerous. Another piece of evidence going against Tiff P is she came on and actually announced it. I'm looking at this lawsuit with Catherine Brown. I'm only going to focus on what she's doing. That points to motive. It doesn't mean she has to agree with the ruling or the judge's decision. It doesn't mean she has to agree with us. No, it does not. She can side with Catherine Brown. She can agree with Catherine Brown. But what she's not allowed to do is characterize us in a manner that's counter to a legal ruling as if it's fact. That's what she's doing. And that is what I consider to be intolerable. She's extremely calculating and deliberate and flew in on this after binary and Carrie Ann were ran up out of here with that bullshit agenda lying on us saying that we were going to attack people. She's up there sitting in the chats and keep keying with those worst offenders in the Umar Johnson sector. She knows good and damn well what she's doing. It's just like Catherine Brown when she filed the lawsuit she omitted and we were going to burn her for this. She completely left out that she was colluding with them, that she had a relationship with all these subjects who she turned around and said were attacking her. I had nothing to do with Catherine Brown. Never met her, had nothing to do with these subjects, never was in their chats. But she all of a sudden says, I'm paying them to attack her. Tiff P was there the entire time through all of these incidents. And now it's coming on here lecturing everybody about the law and responsibility when she modeled none of it. That needs to be brought out in the forefront. And I'm going to continue to talk about it. No one's going to tell me what I can and can't talk about. Well, they can say it, but I'm not going to listen. Feeling assailed and aggrieved when they go about attacking people, aligning with those who attack people, applauding those who attack people. And when the targets dare to speak out, dare to contact authorities, dare to assert their rights, you then have this effort to convert from perpetrator aggressor to victim. These are all tactics that never work on me. I don't care how much you cry. I don't care what you cite about your life being hard. If you cross the line with me, I'm going to deal with it. Nobody has to agree with it. I don't agree to live on a slave plantation and let these idiots do whatever the hell they want to me. And I'm just going to act like we're all black folks. I'm going to take it like hell I am. I'm going to take it right to the authorities. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks about it. You can characterize it any way you want. But the law is on my side because my actions are 100% legal.
I can walk in a police department anywhere in these United States and file a report. There's some of those subjects out there who wouldn't dare because they got warrants. Part of the whole process that's keeping this cesspool spinning, gathering more smut and dirt and grime and it smells so bad, which is why I stay far, far away. Listen, folks, by no means is this going to be the last video. I certainly have more to bring your way. In the meantime, buyer beware.